Greg, great to have you here with us on this Monday morning. You're watching Straight Talk here on Sun News. So the Iran nuke deal is an historic deal, but is it a good deal? Well, not everyone seems to think so. Let's bring in Noah Shackley, the Deputy Director Research of Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. I'm glad you could come in this morning. What's your reaction to this deal? So uh, the jury's out on this deal. I think there are many, many, many things to criticize about the deal that's been done. But the only way we're really going to know whether or not definitively it's a terrible deal mm -hmm. is to see what proof is in the pudding. What's going to happen over the next six months if it lasts that, if the period lasts that long? Uh, is the international community going to uh, be very strong in seeking verification that Iran is not only abiding by the terms that it's agreed to, but also moving forward? to ensure that all of the outstanding concerns that are not addressed by this deal mm -hmm. are accounted for in a comprehensive agreement. But how do if you trust the untrustable? The, the, I mean, they have lied It's not, about not trust. been negotiable it's any not, ever yeah. before. It's not about trust, and I agree with you. Iran has a, a, a somewhat unique history of, of deception. I'll say and, it. a and shady record. A very shady record. Um, and, and it's not about trusting. I, I think I, I've, I've heard the phrase trust and verify bandied about. It's mm -hmm. the opposite. It's verify and then trust. Uh, the international community at this point needs to make sure that every single element of this deal is enforced, and not just for the sake of this deal. Let's not, not forget, this is not a deal in and of itself. This is the, supposed to be the foundation for a comprehensive agreement. But don't you think that Iran is simply trying to buy time? They're very close to being able to launch a bomb. I mean, they're very close, they say. So don't you get, get the sense that six months gives them that time that they say they can build it? Well, you, 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 you touch on a very important point here. I mean, this deal uh, causes Iran mm -hmm. to, if they, if they do abide by its, its uh, stipulations, uh, only causes a pause. They won't be able to move forward to uh, weapons-grade enrichment during the course of this period if, if, if that happens, based on the parameters of the deal. However, they've only paused. The day after this deal is done or it's broken, they can get right back to it. On the other hand, there's, a, there's an imbalance here. Mm -hmm. while, while the Americans are busy dismantling sanctions, mm -hmm. Iran doesn't have to dismantle a single centrifuge. Well, the, Iran ha essentially had to give up nothing here. Not only are they getting the money, but they don't have to undo anything that is of a threat to an outside nation, most specifically to Israel. That's right, uh, and Israel it's is a win-win for them. Israel is feeling uh, uh, isolated right now. <clears throat> they're they're feeling very concerned about about what's going to happen going forward, and I think. Uh, uh, what we really need to see happening over the next six months is for Israel's concerns to be front and center uh, in moving towards a comprehensive agreement. Mr. Netanyahu came out very quickly. I mean, not only did he not get a phone call from this president, who is so determined to make his legacy positive, mm -hmm. you know, Obama called him after the fact. So he, there was no talking to Israel doing it, but he was very quick to co condemn this deal, saying this is an historic mistake. This is... This is not good. We're not, we don't. Uh, we're not happy with it. Look, this deal uh, has given sanctions relief to the Iranians. Uh, the Obama administration has said seven billion. Uh, other estimates have it as high as twenty billion. Uh, and this is this is you know troubling because it's the sanctions that brought the Iranians to the table in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, so and and in the event that things don't go according to plan, which as you've mentioned is is a serious probability. Uh, we're going to have to, the, the West is now relying, Canada, the United States, are now relying on European countries, Russia and China, to decide <laughs> that it's worthwhile to get the sanctions ramped up again. It's like and a I deal think, with a whole bunch of devils. And, and that's, that's a very difficult thing to get going. The, the sanctions take a lot of time to, to, get impl to implement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in addition, even areas that aren't under sanction, there's, there's a chill that happens because of sanctions, where the business community doesn't want to do any business in Iran, doesn't want to do any deals there, because they don't know if their sector is going to be next. What this effectively does is loosens the tension in that regard mm -hmm. and, and opens the door for, uh, for, for the possibility of people trying to uh, do business with Iran and, and disincentivizing further negotiations. So I think it's crucial, crucial that if this relief is, is happening, uh, the P5 plus one have to double down on their efforts and really, uh, really get the push going to, to reach a comprehensive agreement. I find it, I find the whole deal, like, you know, I, I heard Mr. Obama speak and I hear mm -hmm. Mr. Kerry speak and I'm like, are you kidding? Because if you really delve deeper into this deal, there's really nothing in it for Israel, but there's 
lots in it for Iran, which is simply not trustworthy. And it's certainly got a lot of, uh, I mean, even Democrats don't like the deal. Even they are speaking out against it, saying, hold on, hold on a second here. This is not a good deal. It's a dangerous step yeah, forward. Yeah, I think one of the chief fears that Netanyahu has yeah. is that this temporary interim deal will become a permanent deal. And that this temporary recognition of, mm -hmm. of Iran's Iranian enrichment and the Iranian nuclear program will become the permanent status quo. And that's something that, that just can't happen, uh, given Iran's uh, pursuit of, of weaponization uh, and the fact that they still haven't answered all the questions that they need to answer so clearly they don't the have IAEA. To. I mean, obviously they don't have to. They well, can get well, a deal well, done, and, and they don't have to really answer the questions. Well, and that's that's the point. They have to answer those questions during the next six months. They have to open up all of their facilities, including the Parchin military facility, where where the uh, the the uh, research on the the warhead mm -hmm. and the detonation has been uh, reportedly taking place. They have to allow unfettered access, not just to the facilities that they're going to be allowing access yeah. to, but to ones that allow access to that would actually contribute to answering the questions that need to be answered and so what will what will Israel do I mean the Saudis have already offered airspace to them if need be I just find it bizarre that Israel all of a sudden is working with Saudi Arabia I mean it, there's no love between the two nations but they could clearly yeah. have the same they concerns. Have a common, they have common concerns will Israel right. act on its own what, will, what can it do Look, nobody wants to see a diplomatic solution more than the Israelis. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have the most at stake in this, uh, along with the Gulf countries that you mentioned. Uh, Israel, this is their backyard. A nuclear-armed Iran, a country that has repeatedly called for their destruction, is a very scary prospect. And if they can avoid a war with them, they would love to do so. Uh, that said, Iran, Israel has never relied on anybody else to fight its wars for it, has never relied on anybody else to defend it. Um, and, and, uh, and Netanyahu has said that he, he won't rely on anyone uh, this time, should it come to that. But I think all Israelis right now are hoping that the diplomatic track, despite uh, what they see as a bad initial deal, will still uh, yield results, that the sanctions will uh, still be uh, salvageable and, and effective, and that uh, we will be able to move towards a comprehensive agreement uh, uh, and, and bring enough pressure to bear on Iran to, to change their behavior. I'm surprised, that we talked a little bit about this on the break, but you know, President Obama has a huge support base in the Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And I look at a deal like this, and I talk to my husband about it, he's Jewish, I say, how is it that Jewish people can have so much faith in this president, when clearly his foreign policy actions in the past show that he is not a, a an ally to Israel. Well, you mentioned his legacy before. I think that if this uh, interim deal falls apart uh, and if the sanctions aren't able to, to be reconstituted and pressure isn't able to be brought to bear on Iran to, to bring them into compliance mm -hmm. uh, and you do have things descend uh, uh, into uncertainty uh, or the Iranians are able to threaten Israel in a meaningful way with nuclear weapons, uh, you, you, you may very well see that, that support erode. Yeah, it's interesting. Canada's yeah. position, though, uh, is the right position, I think a lot of people say. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the, the government of Canada, Prime Minister Harper, Foreign Minister Baird, have been uh, at, the front, at the forefront of efforts to confront the Iranian threat, not just on the nuclear front, but also in terms of terrorism uh, and human rights abuses, uh, of which they are foremost mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, and so uh, their, their support in this has, has been very meaningful. And before we let you go, would you consider yeah. this one of the most uh, important moments to watch now in history? Absolutely. The next six months are going to define the future uh, contours of the Middle East and the world, whether uh, it, it's significant not just for Iran, not just for Israel, not just for the non-proliferation regime, uh, and, not just, and, not, and, not just, and not just for the Obama uh, administration yeah. and the role of the, of the United States of America. But it's, it's the stability of the region. It's the stability of the world. This is a very significant issue to watch. Yeah, it'll be uh, fascinating to watch and see how well-behaved Iran really is. Yeah. All yeah. right. Thank Time you so tell. much. Okay. Noah Shack joining us this morning to talk about this deal. We will be watching it very, very closely. We're going to take a quick break. Coming up after the break.